Awesome. You're speaking to Francho from The Fallen Prophets and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious podcast right now. But fish pizza? Yeah, I'm a pizza yeah. snob. I'm from New York where the best pizza in the world is. Yeah, but like I'm a pescatarian. I don't eat meat. Okay, but I just like regular cheese pizza. Fish is meat? No, I know. It, it is, but you, you're kind of you're kind of splitting hairs here. No, pescatarian means you can eat seafood. You can make up anything you want, but it's still meat, right? Well, I'm a chicken steakatarian. <laughs> I don't eat fish. <laughs> but I love that. Fish pizza? <laughs> yeah, no, even better. Tuna pizza. And you're talking yeah. tuna out of a can? Yeah, definitely. Oh, oh that is so fucked up. <laughs> that might be more fucked up the most fucked up thing I've heard in a while. Well, I also do these like um um like oven baked sandwiches where there's like roast, then you put some um like tomato sauce. And then you put like this sort of like a mayo thing that is oh, very. Uh, and then, that, then there's tuna, <laughs> and then there's pineapple again, and shitloads of cheese. I so get, the Finns are not known for their culinary prowess. I, I, I get, I get, I, I can see how pineapple and tuna go together. I can, I can understand that. It's beautiful. But fish, I'm still doing that cooking video, and this is now going to be it. You but, know. But fish pizza. Yeah, <laughs> and fish. Canned fish pizza. Well, I, I personally, I can't eat fish unless it's oh. the only reason I eat tuna is so I have an excuse to eat mayo. That's that's really. I don't like mayo, but do you put cilantro on your tuna? Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so allergic to cilantro. Don't even get me started. Cilantro tastes like soap, so no. I like it. Chris is highly allergic to it. Oh my God! Oh. If I eat cilantro, it's like I've taken a hit of. Uh, psychedelic drugs. Really? Oh God, it's fucked. My wife didn't. My wife didn't believe me when we first met. I told her like, I can't have cilantro. She's like, why? So I tell her these stories about what happens. So we went to our friend's wedding, and we had just gotten together. We were only together for like four months at this point, but we go to Mexico, and um, I'm eating. I'm eating at the buffet. And I take a bite, and she goes, Chris, there's cilantro in that. And I was like, oh, well, it's already in my mouth. So, okay. So we're just sitting there, and all of the sudden, she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I was like, what do you mean? What's going on? And she's just like, you were just rambling on for the last five minutes about how white the ceilings were and the uniforms, and then you were staring at a bug on the fucking window talking about how amazing bugs were and i had no recollection of any of that and i was oh just so high it was crazy so it's like catnip for you oh Chris, my I've never ever heard of anything like this like i'm one of the people for whom cilantro tastes like soap like like detergent but this what the fuck yeah. is this? <laughs> oh man my buddy ken we cilantro went through your lsd like i want that allergy and, my buddy, and it's cheap at my buddy Ken Stag, we went into Bellingham, Washington, and we all went out for Mexican food. This was before I knew, you know, what would cause problems for me. And so we're eating nachos and salsa. And then I'm like, oh, well, hey, guys, I'll be right back. I just got to go use the washroom. So I went to the washroom and I came back and all my food is wrapped up and like everything's wrapped up and I'm like, what the fuck? I have two beers sitting in front of me that I didn't even drink because they ordered me beers. And I'm like, yeah. what the fuck? I was just gone for five minutes. What's happening? They're like, dude, we've been looking for you for a fucking hour. Where were you? <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, I was just in the bathroom. They're like, no, you weren't in the bathroom. We went, <laughs> we went there. You weren't there. And I was like, no, I just left the bathroom. I, I know I did. I just walked out. They're like, no, you weren't there. We were out looking on the pier for you. We had no idea what the fuck happened. And I was just like, "That's great." Okay, uh. <laughs> where did you go to a different dimension for an hour and then just pop back? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It happened to me in Mexico another time too. Earlier in my life, I I just have no idea. 
I just disappear and things just get fucked. Hey, Francois, is that how I pronounce it? Yeah, 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 that's great. Hey, Bruce Moore here. I got my partners, Chris and Rena, all the way from Finland. Hey, I'll turn on my camera for you. There I have go. no camera. Zero chance I'm turning on my camera. Look at the pretty picture of me. She's eating fish <laughs> pizza. She's literally eating fish pizza. Well, wait, it's even worse than fish. Would you put tuna fish, canned tuna fish on your pizza? Never. Never, I agree. <laughs> Never. We've got a, we, uh, in South Africa. We've got anchovies on our pizza, which is I've heard worse. of that, but not canned tuna. That's all kinds of wrong. No, no, no. Thank you. Yeah, I like. I think anchovies is worse because it kind of looks like pussy lips. You know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome, to the, welcome to the brutally delicious podcast. <laughs> yeah, how are you guys doing? Good. How are you? <laughs> Good, good. good. What? How are you? You guys are in South Africa, right? Yes, yes. I think we've talked to me and Chris. We just talked. We've talked to somebody else down there facing the gallows. You know oh, those wow, guys? Yeah, yeah. They're up in Joburg. We're down in Cape Town. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. Yes. Another heavy, real good heavy band. Yes, yes. They also they went to Vulcan, I think uh, yeah. last year or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. Anyway, well, so thank you. Go ahead, Mina. Yeah, but how come you have a Scandinavian accent? Me? Yeah, you sound no, like no. a person. <clears throat> yeah, uh, you know, Afri- I'm African, so um, it's almost like a Dutch descent. So that's probably why. Right. Okay. Sorry for mixing my. my <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but you look like a Viking, because you know, so it was an easy mistake to make. <laughs> yeah, we just have hot weather here. We don't have snow, so sometimes I wish I was a Viking. You, you can still wear the funny helmet if you want to. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, how's the band? It's good. Um, just a little bit uh, going wrong with the COVID stuff. We can't play shows and all that. And yeah. we went to tour to Europe this year. But yeah, obviously a few things did could not happen. So yeah, just a bit of a bummer. But at least we got to write some music and whatnot. So that's good. Yeah. Are you guys able to still record and write while you're under? Are you guys under lockdown right now or no? Uh, oh, we had levels. So from I think April or something like that was like complete lockdown. You couldn't go anywhere for like a month or a month and a half or something like that. So at the moment we are on level one and um, which is like very less restricted but still the there's I think there's been here in Cape Town like one metal show with like 30 people because that's yeah. all the, and then all also all our major our big clubs where we used to host shows they all closed down due to not having income so we're all just sitting here waiting for someone to buy a club and just <laughs> open something again. <laughs> man, oh man, COVID's been crazy for the music industry. It, it's it's been insane, man. It's been insane. So I was I was listening to Vessel of Man just a few minutes ago, and that is some heavy shit, and it's so well produced. How are uh, how is it? What is it like trying to release an album or put out some new music in this in this climate that we're in? Um, well, thank you. Thanks for that. Firstly, secondly, um, we we the we are releasing another EP in a month, and we literally wrote and recorded all those tracks in our lockdown of South Africa. So we were done in about end of July. So let's say about three months, we took to write six songs and we got some people to do solo guitars on it. So I think it was a good experience. Like we had absolutely nothing else to do, but get the creative juices flowing. We couldn't do shows. We couldn't meet with each other. So everything was done. I would say like remotely, like I would write a piece and then send it to my other guitarist, Peter, and then we'll send it to our drummer and he will do the drums. And normally people don't worry about the bass because you just do that. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> well, that's you know, how we did. 
You know what's amazing? <laughs> Bass player jokes transcend borders. <laughs> oh, it, always, always. It's never the same joke ever. It's never the same. <laughs> so, so yeah. So, so it it was a good experience. It was uh, obviously the first time ever doing it like that. Um, it went very quick, and because normally we would all get together, have an idea, work on it like that, go home do the scratch patch work on it some more and then meet again and try it out and see how it feels. Where now we couldn't actually see how it feels like in a jam space and all that. So it was quite interesting to do it like that. And so you did it all yourselves? Yes. Even mixed it? So, no, no, no. We've got a, we've got a, um, one of our good friends, his name is Heinrich. Um, he works at Burning Tone Studios and he lives very close to me, and I just um, rec- I recorded everything, and we went to record the vocals as soon as we could see friends and family in South Africa, which was I think in um, beginning of September. Yeah, we finished the vocals like in a few days, and then he mixed and mastered it. So it's it's South African. A producer mixed and mastered the the new stuff and and the vessel of man the previous album that dropped he oh, also wow. did that isn't it amazing how technology has allowed us to just make music at home yeah it is quite amazing i enjoy it so so it's like a process of he sends me a template of his uh, recording program his door that he uses yeah and i just record everything and zip it and send it back to him and that's it it's a good. That's Easy. a really good way to work. Now, <laughs> yeah, yeah. because of COVID, was your drummer recording a real drum kit with mics, or were they playing like an electronic kit? Yes, an electronic kit. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's a, that also amazes me. Anyway. Yeah, well, uh, especially in South Africa, it's pretty expensive for us to to do it that way. Um, so the majority of the times we do use electronic drums. <laughs> But um, hopefully we'll, uh, because we didn't have too much expenses this year so far, band-wise, I think we can, we're going to do a big production next year for like maybe one single track with the music video and what all that stuff. So we're going to see what the next steps are. We don't know yet. Yeah, yeah. What, just if you don't mind me asking, if you wanted to track drums in a studio in South Africa... How much would that cost? Well, that's about two thousand bucks an hour. So, so in dollars, it will be two hundred dollars an hour, more or less. Oh wow, that's crazy! Yeah, it is quite expensive. So, um, and there's only limited places that do it. So, for example, the the Heinrich, the guy who did the mixing and mastering of all our latest two releases. He doesn't have the space. He's got like an attic in his house and that's his own studio with a vocal booth, but there's no space for drums. Yeah, and yeah. it's in a dental area. So you have to go to like one of these proper studios that charge you arm and a leg. <laughs> yeah, 200 bucks an hour. That's insane. That mm. is like undoable. <laughs> Like, like, like in Vancouver, Canada, which is like one of the most expensive real estate markets in the world, I can get the studio where they recorded Dr. Feelgood and the Black Album for $700 a day Canadian. Wow. Which is about like just over 500 US for the for, tw- for a 12-hour lockout. Oh, wow. Yeah, but it's because probably the, um, there's more... I would say clientele for that type of thing, yeah. where it's very it's very limited here in South Africa. So literally, they charge you so much to keep that place up and running. Yeah, yeah. Which is, I mean, yeah, it's, it's amazing. So expensive! Wow, I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. Thank God for software. <laughs> <laughs> so. Were you guys using real amps or amp simulators on your recording? I'm sorry I'm taking it down this road, but I'm just curious. Yeah, I'm, I'm oh, no, no. Yeah, those yeah. are real amps. Those are real amps, yeah. yeah. So it's just a reamping process that, that gets done by, by most studios. So I think uh, we used 
Uh, Mesa Dual Rectifier and uh, good old trusty 5150. You can't complain about the 5150. No way. Not, not at all. So you not just DI'd straight into the DAW using an amp sim and then took the amp sim off and reamped it. And reamped it, yeah. It's unbelievable. Cool. So that, I don't it's know amazing. You, I don't know if you can see this here. Let me try and get it here. Can you see this? Yes. This is my reamping DI. I bought it for 200 Canadian dollars, like, God, I don't even know, 22 years ago or something. And it's still and, punched. And it still works. And it's probably saved me about $60,000 in studio time. <laughs> wow. You know, over 20 years, it's crazy. Yeah, my, my, my friend Heinrich, with, um, he bought himself a tornado. Oh, yeah. Like one of the, those big, big, big daddies. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Bruce, Rena, anyone? I'm taking this yeah. down a technical road, so. <laughs> I know, it's so fucking boring. So when was the last <laughs> time you exfoliated your feet with a strange person's pee? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what? Is that a question for me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We have, yeah, please answer the question now. <laughs> I, I, I didn't recall. Hello. <laughs> you don't recall. I love that. Like. There's been a time, but we're not going to pick it out in the timeline. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, sorry. We've been laughing about this throughout our interviews today. I had, like, I had ordered these exfoliating socks, and then they um, arrived, and, like, with, with mm -hmm. giant letters on top, it says, like, 5% urine. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Can you guys hear me? We can yes, now. Yes, yes. Now we can. I don't know what happened. <laughs> it's good to have you. <laughs> Thank you. So what Rena's is not telling you is we took a break and she went to pee on her feet. <laughs> a jellyfish thing. And like pun very much intended, those pee socks didn't do shit for my feet. So <laughs> don't go down. All right. I, I can see you're extremely entertained by our, our, our toilet jokes, but <laughs> <laughs> there's a pretty good metal scene in South Africa, right? It's, it's pretty um, healthy. Clearly, it's 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 very dedicated, but not big. Okay, I mean, the, b before COVID, though, you had places to play, and there were, I mean, people are showing up because you got. A, I've seen a lot of bands from down there. Yes, yes, yes. So it's mostly, uh, I would say, the majority of the supporters are part of, of musical groups, but um, that's on the local side. Like, for example, if it, like just before lockdown, end of March, or was the beginning of March. Um, the Black Dahlia murder came over from, from the U.S. Mm -hmm. and they played Gramfest and the people came out in thousands, which, so big festivals or like when there's an international band that comes down, it always draws the biggest crowds. But um, before COVID, there was like annually, I would say like two or three shows a month where local bands would play and people, you'll get like a hundred people there um, just rocking it out and having drinks. Mm. Are you able to tour around Africa, or is that not a thing? Yes. No, we've done tours in the past. We've done the we did uh, the whole of South Africa or all the major cities in South Africa in a week. Uh, we just we did it with two other bands. We also um, myself and Peter were part of like a Bloodbath cover band called oh, wow. Bloodbath. Yeah. Bloodbath. So um, it was us and Bloodbarf and Imperial Destruction, and we just toured. It was like a death metal trio that just toured. The, we toured Cape, uh, from Cape Town. We went to PE, uh, Port Elizabeth. We went to Durban, and then we went to Johannesburg, and we came back to Cape Town. So it was like a week trip that we did. You know? And then some of the bands toured to Botswana and Namibia, and that's about the furthest they go out in Africa. Just like just our neighboring countries. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Chris? Uh, I don't have anything else. Rena? No, this is interesting. Um, yeah, the whole like metal scenes and, and unexpected places are interesting topics. So maybe maybe you answered this already and I missed it. But like what size are the venues there usually? Um, yeah, well, like locally you draw like 100 to 150 people. Um, for like local bands, um, 
and then when international bands come through depending on if it's a festival or just like a club club gig it will pack the place out completely like for example a few years ago behemoth was here and the place was the places were packed all out there to do two shows so so stuff like that just brings out the crowd and i always wonder like where are these people in the local bands play either the local bands aren't that good or it's the older people who doesn't want to go out anymore and like party all night and just want to actually go watch the bands that come from overseas. Well, I'm, gotcha. an, older, I'm an older guy and I like to party all night. Oh, well, that's, hey, you should come live here. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody believes you, Chris. What, what's that? Nobody believes you, Chris. No. <laughs> you, don't, you don't believe I like to party all night? Or that no, I'm an not, old guy. Not at all. I can <laughs> your flannel pants just, you know, retiring for the night at 9.30 p.m. <laughs> <you know>. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I made it till one. I made it till two in the morning on Friday. Are you kidding me? Oh, wow. that's because of the whole, uh, yeah, you were partying because of the election. Yeah. Hey, what did you guys think of it? What was South Africa's reaction to the uh, the election news here? Well, um it was good because um, I would say financial wise, because we, we deal with like the, our band deals with a lot of international artists, for example, the art that we do for our covers and whatnot and merch and whatever. So we mostly deal with dollar with the band. So I think it's, it was good because I think the dollar dropped like with one full dollar to the compared to the rand after the election, which was nice. a plus point for us. But politically, I don't think, because South Africa and the United States political, I'm going to call it battles, are so different. So we know, we, I don't even know how to react towards it, because it's so different. Like, yeah. for us, you just go vote, and then all of a sudden, this person pops up and he's your president now. We don't vote for a president. Uh, we vote for political parties, which is, you know, let me not get into that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Yeah. Chris, if you don't and have anything else, go ahead. That, What's that? What did you guys think of it? I was super happy because I think it matters what kind of a person you are. I think there should be some level of integrity, honesty, and, um, just accountability to every single one of us. And when you have someone who's a complete shit of a person and <laughs> that's, you know, something that a lot of people look up to and, and they act the way that they act. It has a resounding effect on the entire world and the like public discourse and narrative on how people talk and, and where we are going as a one nation, one planet nation. So I was mm. static to see the fucker go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's, 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 he's fighting. Eh? He's fighting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's, he's just making an ass of himself. <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. And I, oh, that's not good. It's not but like I was, Yes, I was also quite relieved. I didn't even know how he became president in the first place. <laughs> you and me both, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can understand the dynamics, how. But it's like... It's still like there was this perfect meme on the internet or it was somebody's tweet. Remember when he made fun of that uh, handicapped reporter by actually oh, yeah. making like hand movements. And, um, and there was like somebody's tweet, like for the life of me, I will never understand how this wasn't the end of it. And I think it sums it up. Like, I don't understand. Like you can be gay jobs or gay taxes, whatever. And this is a person who bragged about sexual assaulting women and made fun of handicapped people and pop like, you know, just shit, shit, shit person. And you're like, yes, this is what I want us to follow. So I will never, ever understand anybody who can yeah. um, sign their name under that. It's, Sorry, political rant over. <laughs> it, it, it's, a crazy, it's a crazy time to live here. I'll tell you that. My wife and I didn't like we were like, Okay, we're we're gonna watch it on Tuesday, and then we'll be able to take a break. And then, like you know, we'd be up at six in the morning. Okay, what's happened overnight? And like, 
get home from work. Okay, what's going on now? <laughs> Next thing you know, like we're like we're so tired. Like oh my god, you know, three days. <laughs> yeah, it went on forever. God, it did. But it understandably, did. I mean, it's a freaking pandemic. You know, you can't, yeah. <laughs> like you can't send people to die. You know, mm. you got to give them yeah. access. Republicans are were the ones who stopped all the mail-in ballots to be like counted before the election day. You know that they tried to start processing the votes and they put a ban on it or got their ban through on it. And then when they obviously are going to take way way longer to count, it's like stop the vote. <laughs> like now, now you can't count them anymore. Like we didn't let you count them before, and we sure as hell ain't going to let you count it after. <laughs> so, it was it, stop <laughs> counting for me. Right. I'll say this for me as a Canadian who like in Canada, we don't vote for a president. We vote for people that represent our area. We're a parliamentary system and then right. whatever political party gets the most members, the leader of that party becomes the prime minister of Canada. So there's a lot more, there's, there's a lot more representation and it's not really a popular vote. It's kind of, I still think it could be better, but living here and seeing how someone could be ahead by 5 million votes and still have the possibility of losing is really a concept I don't really understand yet. Yeah. yeah. No, same this side. Like, like I said, we, I think we work uh, exactly the same way. So we vote for political parties and then bah, pops up your new president that you don't know. So <laughs> Right. It's, it's, it's strange. It's strange. Yeah. Hey, before we go, uh, if fans want to get a hold of you guys, how did are you pretty active online, and where do they find you? Oh yes, we are pretty active online. We've got Twitter, we've got Instagram, Facebook. Mainly, uh, I think the majority of following is on our Facebook um, page. And we started like building up our Twitter from I think a few months ago. And that's been going well. And then obviously they can just sub to YouTube and yeah. So you can find all our information on on our Facebook. Awesome. Thank you, man. You guys have anything else, Chris? Rena? I don't, man. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much. And I urge everyone to go because it does sound super kick ass. Oh I agree. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, be safe, my friend. Take care. Yes, you guys do. And congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. See ya. Ever wonder what a punch from Elton John feels like? Or how you'd cope with having turned down the chance to be in Nirvana? Or what signal Keith Richards gives when he wants you to get the hell out of his hotel room? Fans of Too Much Effie Perspective don't have to wonder, because they've heard these exact stories and a jillion others on our podcast. I'm Alex Hoffman, former tour manager for Radiohead. And I'm musician and comedy writer Alan Keller. On the TMEP show, we get guests like Nancy Wilson from Heart, Jeremiah Freights from the Lumineers, and Modern Family's Julie Bowen to tell us things they may have only shared with their therapist, clergy, or a TMZ stringer. So join us on Too Much Effing Perspective. That's E-F-F-I-N-G Perspective. The only podcast you crank up to 11. Oh.